Maryam السلام, was only a teenager as she was sitting in the mihrab. Allah says and relates in the book the story of Mary. One day, Maryam decided to go a far east in Jerusalem close to Al-Aqsa Mosque and devote an extra worship to Allah away from everyone. As she was sitting there devoted in her worship, we sent to her what he calls in the Quran, our spirit. He is, most likely he was the angel, Jibreel alayhi salam. To Maryam's eyes, she could see the image of a beautiful and complete person. She says, I seek refuge in Allah from you if you truly are believing in Allah and you fear God. He immediately said to her, don't be afraid, I am a messenger from the Lord to give you a gift from Allah of a righteous son. Oh. She said, how am I supposed to have a child, a son now? How am I supposed to bear a child? Not a single being has even touched me. And I am not a wicked, dirty woman. Jibreel Hassan replies to her by saying, Fa'ala, he said, Oh, very easy it will be. It is easy upon your Lord. And we shall make him a sign for the people, a miracle, and a mercy from us. And it is a decreed matter that no one can change. It's already decided a long time ago. Jibreel Hassan, he blew that soul into her womb. And Isa alayhi salam was conceived. Maryam alayhi salam became scared and she became sorrowful and sad. So she ran away from her people. What is she going to say to them? She's a virgin. She's never been touched by a man. She's a righteous woman. How is she going to explain that she is now pregnant? They're not going to believe her. So she ran away. After the nine months of, of, of conceiving him, the pangs of labor came to her at the trunk of a palm tree. When she sat down and she felt the labor coming in, she started to cry. Maryam السلام, was crying from the physical pain exhaustion and from the emotional devastation that she was going through. Because she is now going to face her people and they're going to humiliate her and call her all these wicked names. She's crying saying, Oh, I wish that I would have died before this day. And forgotten, as soon as she said that, Allah said an amazing verse. He says, so he called out from beneath her, do not be sad. Who called out from beneath her? One says that it was the angel Gabriel, Jibreel alayhi salam, is the one who called out to her. Another interpretation, which is the one that I lean towards, that it was Jesus Christ, Isa alayhi salam himself. Don't be sad. Don't worry. Allah has made beneath you a bed, a comfort, a cushion. Somehow she found comfort and a stream. There was a, a fountain that came out. The palm tree that you're leaning on, shake the trunk. Dates, beautiful ripe dates will fall upon you. You've got to do what's in your power and Allah will do the rest. Isa alayhi salam said to her, eat and drink. Drink from the stream and eat from the dates. So she ate and drank and regained her energy. Then Isa alayhi salam said to her, as for the thing that you are worried about, what are you going to say to the people? If you meet anyone, you see anyone, just signal to them. I have vowed to fast. In those days, they used to fast from food and water, and also you could choose to fast from speaking. So she arrived at her people. She came back to the city while carrying her baby. Maryam, the devout, pure woman, carrying a baby. And she had been absent for a few months now. What is going to happen? Maryam, you have brought forth something outrageous. Oh, Maryam. Oh, the sister of Aaron, meaning you are from the lineage 
of Moses and his brother is Harun. You come from a lot of prophets. How could you do this? Your father was not a bad man or wicked. And your mother was not a dirty, wicked woman. Allah says in the Quran, all she did was point to Isa, her baby. She just pointed to him. And immediately Isa alayhi salam spoke. I am the slave of Allah. He gave me the scripture and he made me a prophet. He commanded me to pray and to give zakat, almsgiving, charity. And he made me blessed wheresoever I be, so long as I live. Jesus Christ immediately makes it very clear. Allah makes it clear to us that he was not the son of God, nor was he part of the Trinity, nor was he a God himself. He said, I am the slave and servant of God. And I am dutiful to my mother. And I am not arrogant, nor am blessed. That is the true Jesus, son of Mary. My brothers and sisters, Isa alayhi salam grew up and his mother Mary, Maryam alayhi salam, raised him. And Isa alayhi salam does not receive the message, does not become a prophet for the next 30 years. Who's preaching in the meantime? Zakaria and Yahya. Zakaria alayhi salam has grown old and Yahya begins to call the people. And he realizes that there are some people who are moving away from the Torah, from the Bible of, that was sent to Moses, they're starting to change words around. They're trying to be hypocritical. People are starting to use it for their benefit. They start to manipulate the words and take money for it. They start to be kings and emperors and priests and bishops who start to work you know, for political agendas and work with the kings to manipulate and change things for the people. And only a few people are left following the true teachings of Musa. So Yahya and Zakaria, they begin to preach to them and try to return them back to the teachings of Musa, of Moses, peace be upon him. As a result, brothers and sisters, some of the kings, they got very frustrated with Zakaria and Yahya. That there was a king who had a, a, who had a cousin. Actually, she was his niece. And he fell in love with her. And he wanted to marry her. And because of this girl, this niece of this king, who wanted to do this abomination, which was forbidden in the Torah, he's forbidding us from getting married. He's forbidding this stuff. And I want to be with you. And so... He sent his troops. And what happened to Yahya John alayhi salam? And truly they severed Yahya alayhi salam's head. They put her on a tray and gave it to the king. So the girl can see it and that's how he married her. And this is a Sahih Hadith in Bukhari about Yahya alayhi salam. As for Zakaria alayhi salam, they also killed him. And corruption began to increase. Now comes the time for a stronger messenger to arise. And now was Jesus alayhi salam's time. He turned 30 years old and now he received, started receiving the Injil, the book of God, the real original Bible. And then he began to preach to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Imran, Allah will teach Isa alayhi salam the book and the wisdom. He will have wisdom to judge correctly. And he will give him the knowledge of the Torah. And he will be a messenger to the children of Israel. And when he came to them, he said, I have come to you with a sign from your Lord. I will make for you from clay the likeness of a bird. And then I will blow. And by the will of God, it will become a bird. He also said, I will also heal the blind and the leper. People who had disease, skin disease, who would touch them and recite Allah's words and they would be cured. And by the will of Allah, bring the dead to life. I will also inform you of what things you eat and what you treasure up in your houses. Surely this is a sign for you if you are true believers. He also said, and I have come to confirm the truth of whatever there still remains of the Torah. Jesus Christ did not come with a new religion. He came to enforce the religion of Moses. But I've come to enforce what was lost. Remember, they have changed the Torah. So he reminded them and brought back the true words in a new book called Injil. Not only that, and to make lawful to you some of the things which had been forbidden to you. And I have come to you with a sign from your Lord, so have fear of Allah and obey me. Surely Allah, God, is my Lord and your Lord. To serve him alone, this is a straight path. Isa went around to all the people preaching to them. And people used to come to him 
Once soon as he did the miracles, there were more and more people gathering around him and believing him. However, there were still people conspiring, wanting to work against him. Isa salam stayed only for three years, from 30 to 33 years, before God left him. One day, Isa alayhi salam realized that the Jews began to develop a campaign against Jesus and his mother. They didn't like this new book, they didn't like these new commands, they want to they, they wanna still extort people. Jesus alayhi salam bring them back to the truth. So they started to make a campaign. They started talking about his mother Mary. They started saying, hey, getting pregnant and giving birth to a child and she claims she, no man touched her. And then they started to spread a rumor that Maria Mary committed a fornication. She slept with a guy and they gave different names and Jesus is not the prophet of God. And he is an illegitimate son. And they said upon Mary heinous words, bad words. And upon Jesus Christ they said bad words. And recall when I restrained the Israelites from you, when you came to them with clear proofs, whereupon those of them who disbelieved said, this is nothing but clear magic. They called everything that Jesus Christ did as magic and sorcery. So they called him a sorcerer. When Isa salam felt that people were going to conspire against him, he gathered the people who believed in him and he said, O oh my people, who would like to be my supporters and my disciples? The apostles or the disciples or the supporters or the victors. The true believers said to him, We are the helpers of Allah for you. We believe in God and be our witness that we have submitted ourselves exclusively to Allah. Now when these disciples came to, the, to Isa a.s., they asked him for something. They said, Oh Jesus Christ, before we do that, we want a miracle just to show us how our hearts can be firm. He said, what do you want? After all of this, they said, can your Lord bring down a feast, a banquet, food from the skies so we can look at it and eat from it? Thereupon, Isa a.s. said, fear Allah if you do indeed have faith. They said, we desire to be part of all of this and that our hearts be satisfied. And we know that you did speak the truth to us and that we are its witness. They want to just make sure. So Isa alayhi salam said, O oh Allah, our Lord, send down to us a banquet from the heavens that shall be a festival for the first of us and for the last of us and a sign from you and provide us with sustenance for you are the best provider of sustenance. Allah said, I shall indeed send it down to you. Then I shall afflict whoever among you disbelieves with a terrible punishment after it if you don't believe. These helpers, they stood up and they tried to defend Isa alayhi salam in everything, their wealth and property. They sacrificed their lives. They were ready to die in the cause of their prophet Isa alayhi salam in his protection. They hid him when they found that these people started to conspire to kill Isa alayhi salam. At this point, we don't know who they are. All we know is they are a large elite group who have gotten these positions and influenced the people to follow them in false from among the children of Israel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And recall when I restrained the Israelites from you when you came to them with clear proofs, whereupon those of them who disbelieved said, This is nothing but clear magic. This was the particular group that later on in history took on the name Yahud, which means the Jews. They came out from among the children of Israel. They entered, they tried to enter the home where they thought he was, and Jesus Christ was lifted by God in flesh and soul. And they captured another man who appeared like he was Jesus Christ. They did drag someone. And it's possible they did put those at helmet chain around uh, his head. They did put him onto the cross and bang him with nails. And they crucified this guy next to other criminals that were beside him. 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually lifted Jesus Christ and he was not found anymore. And so they boasted, well, that was the guy who calls himself the Messiah, son of Mary. We are the heroes who got rid of the fraud. That's what they say. Allah says in the Quran, and they're saying, we slew the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. In fact, they had neither slain him nor crucified him. But the matter was made dubious to them. It was made as if so, that they split. None of them were sure or had enough evidence till today. And they surely slew him not. And those who differed about it too were in a state of doubt. From among them, those who were witnessing of the crucifixion, they divided into different groups and they all differed about the nature of Jesus Christ. Among the main groups were the following. Number one, those who did not believe he was Jesus Christ at all and that Jesus Christ never was sent and he is still yet to come in the future. They are the Jews. Then there was another group. They said, no, he was truly Jesus Christ but God lifted him. And they are the Muslims on the truth. And then there was a third group. They said, no, Jesus Christ was God himself. And then a fourth group said, no, Jesus Christ was the Son of God. And then they added, as the, after 300 years, begotten. And so they said, he's the Son of God. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you that the actual Bible that Jesus Christ spoke and revealed is lost. They do not have it anywhere in the world. However, dozens of what they call Gospels circulated in early Christian community approximately 50 years after Jesus Christ. These Gospels, they're like, it's similar to Hadith. But even our Hadith are more accurate. Because our Hadith can be traced all the way back to the actual man or woman who literally sat in front of the Prophet ﷺ and heard it from him directly, or a group. We have it all the way. But what they have is something even secondary to Hadith. What they thought Jesus Christ said or taught. So what happened? In about 325 after Jesus Christ, for the first time, they got confused. Which gospel should we follow? Where is the Bible? Where is the complete Bible? Each one says something a little bit different to the other. And so there were over a dozen different gospels. There was one called the, uh, the, the Gospel of Thomas. The other was called the Gospel of Peter. And there was a very strange one, it was called the Q document. The Q document was the most accurate, almost, but it was lost. The Gospel of Thomas was gone. The Gospel of Peter was gone. And they finally agreed on four books, four Gospels. They called them the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel of Mark, the Gospel of Luke, and the Gospel of John. They are four books written by four different people. One of them was a Jew, and then he converted to Christianity. One of them was a criminal, and he had repented and came back. They never met Jesus Christ. But what they claimed was they were inspired, meaning they felt that these were his teachings. And so they sat on four specific Gospels and they called it the Bible. Actually, no one knows who wrote these Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John did not write them. They just carried them on and compiled them. Christian theologians and bishops they met around the 2nd or the 3rd century in France. It's, it's called the First Council of Nicaea in 325 in France. And they decided on the four Gospels, and so they decided what went in, and they decided what went out. And they called it the Bible. That's the one of today that they follow. And they put it together just to save their religion. And this is all before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa 
Now, what do we believe about Jesus Christ السلام, after all of this confusion that has happened? In Islam, the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told us that Jesus Christ is going to come back. And when he comes back, he will not come back following the Bible sent to him. Because it's gone. He will come back following the final Bible, the final revelation sent by God, which is the Quran. Rasulullah Muhammad said in this hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. He said, By the one who possesses my soul in his hands, by God, very soon now, that Isa, the son of Maryam, is going to descend, is going to come down. And how is he going to come down? As what? A judge and just and fair. He will break the cross. It means he will stop and put an end to the false belief in the cross. He'll break that ideology. And there will be Christians who will follow him in the right way. This is in the Quran, actually, before his actual death. And he will kill the people. It means that he will return the people back to the original teachings of not eating pork. It's forbidden. He will place a special type of tax for people who do not want to enter into Islam and follow him. Wealth in his time will increase until there will be no one poor enough to be asking for charity. That's the time of Jesus Christ. So it's a beautiful time. Poverty will be gone. People will return back to love the worship of God as it truly is to the point where one sajda, one bowing, one prostration to any person becomes more beloved to them than the entire world or whatever is in it. Then Abu Hurairah narrates this hadith. He says, if you like, you can recite the verse in the Quran which supports this. Allah says, There will be among the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, towards the end of time, who will believe in Jesus Christ before he actually dies. And on the day of judgment, Jesus Christ will bear witness in front of God that these people, O oh God, they followed me correctly, and he will ask Allah to save them. Jesus Christ will actually come down from heaven on the east of Damascus, closer to Palestine, where the white minaret is, he will come down there. And when you see him, you will know him by the following features. He is a man who is marbu'a. Marbu'a means he's neither too tall nor too short. He will have two pieces of cloths. He's wearing two pieces of garments. Rasulullah describes him as a beautiful, handsome man. Isa is actually, in another hadith, Prophet says, that when he went in Isra al Maraj, he went around the Kaaba and he was praying. He goes, I look and I saw a man who was about my height. He had beautiful hair that came down to his shoulders and he was leaning on two people's shoulders. They were angels. And I said to Jibreel, Gabriel, who is this man? He was so handsome and he said, Kana Adamiyan. Adamiyan means he was dark, he was tan in color. Because Prophet Adam was tan in color. He was dark in color. And they said, Jibreel said, that is Isa, the son of Maryam. Jesus Christ will have another important mission. An enormous mission. And his ultimate mission will be that God, Allah, has saved him, only him, among all the prophets and messengers, to return him back to actually kill the false Messiah. Isa is called the Messiah, but he's called the truthful Messiah. And there's another man who's called Al Masih al Dajjal, the false Messiah, the lying Messiah, the Antichrist. The first thing he will do is that he will claim that he is Jesus Christ, the son of Mary. In fact, the Sahih, the Sahih Muslim, Prophet when he was going around the Kaaba as well, he saw another man who looked stocky, coarse hair, dark features, his right eye, 
looked like the pupil was floating like a sultana and he was also reclining on one man on his shoulder and Jibreel said to him that is al-masih al-dajjal that's the false messiah when dajjal comes out he will rule basically the world and the muslims will be in havoc and turmoil and there will be oppression he tells the people that he is god until isa salam comes and the first thing jesus christ will do after breaking the ideology of worshiping the cross and eating the poor he will go to jerusalem isa salam will enter the mosque and he will find al-mahdi al-mahdi means who will be Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, and he will lead the Muslims and he will fill the Arab world with justice, just as it was filled with oppression. And this man, Al Mahdi, he will try to fight off the Dajjal, but he can't beat him. And he will be in Palestine, the Dajjal will be coming to Palestine to fight the army of the Muslims who are behind this man, Al Mahdi. When Isa, Jesus Christ, السلام, would have arrived with a bunch of followers, and he will enter Palestine and Jerusalem in Al Aqsa Mosque. And he will enter and find that Al-Mahdi is leading Iman. And when they see Jesus Christ, they will know him. And Al-Mahdi will try to move back to let Jesus Christ pray Iman. <coughs> Out of respect. But Jesus Christ says to him, Isa Islam says, No. Every nation has its own Iman. And you are the Iman of this nation. So Isa Islam prays behind Imam al-Mahdi. SubhanAllah. Then when they finish from that salat, they go and they find that the Dajjal and his army had arrived at the gates of Jerusalem. As they're about to charge, Isa alayhi salam grabs a sword and he comes out. As soon as the Dajjal sees Jesus Christ, he runs away and he begins to melt. Because he has supernatural abilities. But Isa alayhi salam runs after him before the Dajjal completely melts. And he strikes him with his sword and the Dajjal bleeds. He says to everyone, Look, if he was a god, I would not be able to kill him. And look at the blood as evidence, for God does not bleed. And so after that, Isa lives for 40 years with the Muslims of the world and will be filled with beauty and serenity. Yeah. And then Allah will bring him to die, truly die. They claim the most compassionate Lord has taken a son to himself. Surely you have made a monstrous statement. It is such a monstrosity that heavens might well nigh burst forth at it. The earth might be cleaved and the mountains fall. At their describing a son, the most compassionate Lord, it does not befit the most compassionate Lord that he should take a son. There is no one in the heavens and the earth, but he shall come to the most compassionate Lord as his servant. Verily, he encompasses them and has counted them all. On the day of judgment, each one of these will come to him singly. The Messiah, son of Mary, was no more than a messenger before whom many messengers have passed away. And his mother adhered wholly to truthfulness, and they both ate food, as other mortals do. See how we make our signs clear to them, and see where they are turning away. Allah's going to bring Jesus Christ. O oh, Jesus, son of Mary, did you say to the people, take me and my mother for gods beside Allah? And he will answer, glory to you. It was not for me to say what I had no right to. Had I said so, you would surely have known it. You know all what is within my mind, whereas I do not know what is within yours. You indeed, you know fully all that is beyond the reach of human perception. I said to them nothing except what you commanded me, my Lord. That is, serve Allah, my Lord and your Lord. I watched over them as long as I remained among them. And when you did recall me, then you yourself became the watcher over them. Indeed, you are witness over everything. If you punish them, my Lord, they are your servants. And if you forgive them, you are the Almighty, the wise. Thereupon Allah will say, This day truthfulness shall profit the truthful. For them are gardens beneath which rivers flow, the truthful ones who did not take Jesus Christ as Son of God. 
There they will abide forever. Allah is well pleased with them and they will be pleased with Allah. That indeed is the mighty triumph. To Allah belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth and all that is in them. And he is full of power till the day of judgment. And the people will go around saying to all the prophets, help us, help us, but no prophet will be able to help until we reach Jesus Christ. And he will say, go away from me, go away from me. I am not in a position to intercede for you. So we go to Muhammad and he says, I am the one, I am the one.